Hello, welcome to First Christian Church. Thank you for worshiping with us today. We hope that you find our time together to be meaningful. If you are new to us, we would love a chance to get to know you. So I would invite you to visit our website, icdisciples.org. And there on the homepage, you can click the connection card, fill that out, and we would love to be in touch. So today as we begin worship, we light our candle, proclaiming our belief that God is in our midst. And now I invite us to sing together. My hope on God is founded. Let us worship. Candle lighting is something we have often shared as an act of prayer. So as we begin our time of prayer, we light a candle for all of us as we enter into a time of year where we want to gather with family and friends. Help us connect in ways that are both safe and satisfying. And we light a candle for students, teachers, and parents who are having to adjust to changing learning models in response to the spread of COVID-19. And we light a candle for whatever is in your heart today. Please pray with me. God of all hopefulness, we come to you this morning seeking your comfort in your sustaining presence. We never dreamed that we would be entering into harvest time still unable to be physically with one another. We miss our old normal lives. But God, we also recognize that this difficult time can be an opportunity for growth. We can and must learn new ways of doing ordinary things. And so we ask you for flexibility, courage, and resil resilience as we continue to learn, change, and try new things. We ask you for patience for ourselves and others in our lives as we are all navigating the same waters. And we thank you for your constant and faithful presence among us, whatever challenges we face. We pray in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Where do we find hope? Perhaps it is in the difficult instructions of our faith that point us to want 
and to create a better world. Today, we are reading from Romans, chapter 12, verses 9 through 21. Let us listen for a word from God. Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay anyone evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their heads. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. May God bless our hearing of this word. It is the season of stewardship. So for Children's Moment this week, we're going to talk about stewardship. Stewardship is kind of a big word that means to take care of things that are important. Stewardship is about managing and being responsible for all things in our care. Stewardship asks us to take care of the world and the church on behalf of God, who loves each of us so much. So kids, if you ask adults what stewardship is about, many of them may respond that stewardship is about giving money to the church. And while they wouldn't be wrong, stewardship is about more than that as well. Because stewardship asks us to consider how we take care of creation and our earth, which is why I decided to be outside today, even though it's pretty chilly. Stewardship asks us to think about what talents and gifts we have and how we can share them with others. Stewardship asks us to think about which things are most important in our lives and then to prioritize how we spend our time. Stewardship is about thinking about others and how we can care for them with food or with money or with connection and friendships. Stewardship asks us to look at the money we have and the people that we know and to consider them as resources to help the church and our world. And as we think about these different parts of stewardship, we ask ourselves, how will we respond to God? In which ways will we love and take care of the world? Because kids are naturally generous and empathetic, they have amaz amazing and creative answers to that question. They give more freely and from the heart. In case you don't know it already, kids are awesome. So here's what I want you to do. All of our kids who are in second grade and up received pledge cards in the mail this week, right along with the adults. So kids, I want you to fill those out and share them with your church. And if you didn't get a card because you're younger or you can't find it, use any piece of paper and write down the ways you can help our church take care of the world. And don't forget to mail it to the church. Older kids can fill it out online on our website if they like. Please pray with me. 
God, help us to be good stewards. Help us to use this time to think about and then commit to the ways we can respond to your love in our world. Help us to remember that we have more than enough, and therefore we share with others. Amen. From the very start of the pandemic, First Christian reached out with messages of hope and support and action. Jill, Kara, and Laura, our church leadership and individual members of the church are constantly identifying and responding to needs of us members. I so appreciate the creative connections through email, newsletters, phone calls, bag drops at our doors, drive by the church invites to pick up goodies, several Zoom groups, handwritten notes, and YouTube recordings. I look forward to Sunday mornings and the service with coffee Zoom gatherings. Even though physically distanced, I get to see my first Christian friends and learn about their lives. The reaching out and the modeling among first Christian friends gives me a boost of hope to sense optimism, take positive action, and dispel unfounded fears. Thank you, First Christian. In the past year, I have found hope inside myself through my friends and family. Um, FCC has helped me find hope by attending youth group in person and on Zoom. Finding hope for me was um, having a connection, seeing people, on Zoom or in person because we were in quarantine and it was really hard. I didn't, I wasn't able to see my friends all the time. And so FCC has helped me by doing youth group. Hi, I'm Kent Clark and First Christian Church has helped give me hope during this time through the opportunity to interact with our youth. My wife, Rebecca, and I get to work with our quarantines group from time to time. And uh, we get so much encouragement out of talking to these kids. You know, in a difficult and frightening time for all of us, it amazes me their ability to adapt to changing rules at school. They're doing hybrids and onlines and halfways, and they're doing it with grace and hope and they really help give me hope for our future. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to interact with them. In the last year, in spite of our separation, First Christian Church has given our family hope. First, we are so excited to be welcomed, literally with open arms, even more so than we've been welcomed to FCC online. We also feel like we can make a positive difference in the world as part of this community. And finally, our entire family is looking forward to growing spiritually along with First Christian Church, and especially Felix and I, since we're brand new to our spiritual journeys. Any last words, Felix? <laughs> I'm so glad you have hope. <laughs> I love hearing these different voices from various people in our congregation, especially little Felix's voice, as they reflect on the hope we have helped each other find in this difficult year. Because the reality is that in a year like 2020, it would be easy to just quit trying. It would be easy to get so overwhelmed by everything that is happening, or maybe I should say everything that isn't happening. It would be easy to get discouraged by the divisiveness that seems to be everywhere. It would be easy to get caught up in the fear we have all felt as we have experienced this newly discovered virus. 
But these friends from First Christian remind us that hope is available, whether it is embracing hope simply as an attitude from which to live, a choice to make, not because we don't acknowledge what is difficult, but a choice to make because we believe that the difficult things don't get the last word. Or whether it is the hope we get through the interactions, the kindnesses, the other gifts we receive from one another. It is important to pause and sometimes simply to sit in the midst of the hope that God and our community give us. So the reading that we heard today comes from the book of Romans. This is written by Paul to the church at Rome. This was the church living in the capital city of the empire. So we can imagine that a number of stressors were at play here. The reality is that for some time, the early Christians were largely Jewish people who understood that in Jesus they had experienced the Messiah. They didn't leave Judaism, but rather in addition to their usual Jewish worshiping practices, they gathered with others who had the same understanding of Jesus. But over the years, for various reasons, in various places, the divide between the Jewish people and the Jewish Christians got wider. In Rome, this was one of the things they were facing, as Jewish Christians experienced more division and more separation from family and friends. Meanwhile, they were also living in the capital city of the empire that was always, at least in the background, a threat to both Judaism and Christianity. So it's into their own stressors and divisions that these words come, words that begin by talking about how to be toward others in the Christian community and then turn outward speaking about how to respond to those from outside the community. And there in the middle of this passage, we hear the words rejoice in hope. Not something that's easy to do, but a choice that Paul encouraged the people to make. The choice to rejoice in the reality that today's difficulty is not the whole picture. And so it's important to note what hope is. See, too often it's easy for us to fall into the trap of using the words hope and wishes interchangeably. But wishes, those are the things we make when we blow out our birthday candles, wishing that we had a pet unicorn or a castle in which to live. Wishes are the big ticket items we put on our Christmas list, the things in the JCPenney Christmas catalog that I knew as a child I would never get. Wishes are usually not rooted in reality and generally dependent upon some other force or being to provide them for us. But hope, Hope is something different. Hope is different first because of where it is rooted. It is rooted in the real possibilities that for Christians come from the heart of God. Hope is also different because while it is rooted in the very being and essence of God, it requires our participation. Hope isn't something that leaves us kicked back waiting for it to happen, but it is something that happens when we both believe in it and work for it. And we hear this in today's text. 
while the people were hurting, while they were concerned, while they were experiencing division, Paul doesn't ignore these realities, but he also doesn't just tell them to wait for a better day. Rather, he says things like, let love be genuine, hate what is evil, hold fast to that which is good, extend hospitality to strangers, bless those who persecute you, Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. If your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. Paul tells that to a community, tells them that they are not only to wait on hope, but to live from it. And the same words come to us today. Friends, we have a choice. We can choose to live out of hope. How do we do that? Well, we do that by doing the things we heard witness to in our video earlier. Welcoming people, nurturing faith, keeping connected, encouraging one another. And we do that not just by interacting with those who are already part of our faith community or our other circles, but by getting involved in the world around us and living in ways, in the ways that we understand God wants the world to look like. So we choose hope when we work for just systems. We choose hope by claiming again and again the conviction that all people, especially those oppressed by systems and pushed down by the powerful, that all people have value. Friends, we choose hope by being the church together and by being the church in the world. We have been talking about stewardship about the commitments that we will make to support the ministry we share in the coming year. And let's be clear, these commitments make a difference for our faith community. The financial gifts and the commitments of leadership that each of you makes help us do our ministry. In fact, we're dependent upon you. Your gifts make sure we have a building to return to when we can again gather. They make sure we have staff to help lead us in worship and faith formation and mission. And they do so much more from which we benefit. But they are not just about keeping the organization of First Christian going. Rather, they are about being the church in the world, about claiming again and again God's love is for everyone, and about always making sure that everyone is welcome at the table about showing the world the possibility of another way. As we look forward to the year 2021 and years beyond, we do so with hope. We do so claiming that God's love matters and that the presence of God's people can make a difference in this world. And the gifts we give, the ways we participate together in this ministry, are commitments we make to being a people of hope in the world. 
Friends, I believe the world needs churches like First Christian. Churches that embrace the fullness of God's love for everyone. Churches that understand that faith is not about sitting and waiting for God to act, but about working alongside God in the building of the kingdom. Churches where people can learn and grow and change together to become more fully who God created us to be. That is the church we are called to be. Together, may it be the church we are. Amen. Today we heard how First Christian Church has provided hope during this current time of challenge. Members talked about how staff and other members reached out through both traditional and technically progressive methods of communication to provide hope to them. First Christian Church's continual message of hope during both this time of pandemic and during so-called normal times is made possible through the commitment of time, talent, treasure, which is financial gifts, and temple, which is church participation. We make these commitments to these four areas during our annual stewardship campaign, which happens to be going on right now. Let's all participate in our stewardship campaign and keep hope alive at First Christian Church. And speaking of stewardship, during this time of separation, we appreciate all who are continuing their financial commitment to First Christian Church. These offerings can be made by mailing your check to the postal address on the screen, or electronically by clicking the donate button on our website. Let us give gladly and generously. As we come to the communion table, I invite you to gather whatever food and drink you will receive for communion. Here, as we gather, we remember that this is a table of hope. This is a table where we catch a glimpse of the fullness of God's kingdom. This is a table where together we come across divisions and divides and where all are welcomed and loved by God. This is a table where you are welcome. Let us pray. God, here we embrace your vision for a world where peace, hope, and love reign. Bless the elements we are about to receive, that they might empower us to work for your vision and to live as your people. Amen. So we come to the table, and we remember that when Jesus gathered with his friends, he took bread and blessed it and broke it, and gave it to them saying, this is my body for you. I now invite you to receive your bread from your table and in doing so to commit your body to the work of Jesus in this world. Likewise, after the meal, Jesus took the cup and passed it to them saying, this cup is a new covenant a new covenant between you and I made of love. And I invite you now to drink of the cup and in doing so to invite God's love to flow through you.
God does not leave us hopeless, but remains present in all the challenges of our lives. So let us choose hope. Let us choose possibility and let us share those gifts with a world that so needs them. Amen.